Welcome back. I'm certainly glad you could join us today. Today is the last show of the 31st series. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done today. Today I've taken my standard old canvas, and I use an 18 by 24 inch, but you use whatever size is convenient. And I've taken a little black and gray gesso and a foam brush, just a, a disposable foam brush, and I've just sort of painted in a little scene here. To make these little effects, I just took a natural sponge and just daubed a little bit. That's all there is to it. Let that dry completely, and then we've covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid clear. So it's all wet and ready to go. And I'll show you a nice way of making a just a gorgeous little painting that's very simple. Let's start out today. And we want to start with a small amount of the Indian yellow. Don't need much, just a little. On the two inch brush, Indian yellow is very transparent. So we can just paint right over everything. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just let it go like something. There, like that. That's all. Maybe a little touch of yellow ochre right above it. Just to change the flavor a little bit. And then I'll go into a little bit of the bright red. Now you decide what colors you want to use, how strong you want them to be, or how weak. It's up to you. Up to you. There. Something about like that. Maybe even a touch of alizarin crimson. Right up like there. But just let it go. And we're just making little, little crisscross strokes. Very easy. Okay. Once again, all these colors we're using are transparent enough that you can still see the gesso right through them. It's no big deal. You're not going to hurt a thing. Just paint right over anything that's in your way. See, and already we have a pretty nice looking little sky. Okay, I want to mix up, uh, we'll take some phthalo blue, crimson. Phthalo blue and crimson. I'll make a little lavendery color. But I want this to be to the crimson side, so I put many times more crimson in it than blue. There, the blue is much, much stronger than crimson. Okay. Now, let's take a little bit of that color. Shoo, we didn't even have to wash the brush yet. And we'll go right up in here, and let's just fill in the rest of the sky. Something about like that. This is just a lavender color, very pretty. And we're painting right over liquid clear. There we are. Be sure your brush is dry and free of paint thinner when you're doing this. Liquid clear and paint thinner have a violent reaction. So you don't want to put them together. Be sure your brush is as dry as you can possibly get it. Okay, maybe just a touch more of that. I like it. There. Okay. That is a beautiful color. I like lavender. I really like lavender, purple, whatever you want to call it. Blue and crimson, that's what it is. Now then, time to wash the old brush. And that's the part that's most fun. Okay, scrub the old brush in odorless paint thinner. And we'll take and shake off the excess. <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. Okay, let's have some fun. Let's take a little bit of titanium white. I'm just going to tap a little right onto one corner of the brush. That's all there is to it. Just tap a little. Let's go up in here. And we'll start right at the edge of this mountain with that titanium white and begin working up. Now titanium white is very opaque. It's very opaque. But when you have it this thin, it's thin enough to still let a little bit of that show through. There. See, we can pull it like there's a sun rays coming through. There we are. Just like it, see, it just gives the impression that there's a beautiful glow going on back here. Okay, wash the old brush off. Get it good and dry. Now then, let's have some fun down here. That's about all I'm going to do for the sky. I want this to, to look like it's just bathed in light. And it'll give that impression that easy. Okay, now then. 
down in here. Got to decide what we're going to do. Oh, we got some of that lavender color. That's sort of pretty. Let's just cover some of this. Let's just cover it. Put a little bit of that down there so we have a base color. And we'll stop it right along in there. We don't want that to get up into the sky. Just put that on there that so when we when we put highlights on all this, it'll pick up some of that color. I need to mix up a little more. I didn't make enough phthalo blue. And a lizard and crimson. And that's all there is to it. Just, just mix it up. Doesn't have to be well mixed. It's good enough. Good enough. Now, there's a couple of big old trees here. We can go ahead and sort of block those in. See, the basic shape's already there. It takes very little color, just enough to, to create some little arms on him. And that's all you need. Hey, we better not leave him out. He'd get upset. There we go. Something about like it. All right. Now, we got all of that blocked in. All of it's covered with a little bit of lavender. And we're ready to go. Have to start making big decisions now. Okay. I'm going to grab another old two-inch brush. I have several of them going here. Let's take a little sap green, a little of the yellow, a little yellow ochre. All those yellows mixed together with a little sap green. There, we'll just make all kinds of beautiful colors. Mix them on the brush, though. Tap, push, give it a little push. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, back in, back in here, we want to start, yeah. Now you could do this with a one inch brush if you would like. Can do easy. There. See, I just want to start putting the impression of all kinds of little duders that are happening around in there. Just change the flavor a little bit every now and then. Your dark's already there, so you don't have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about it. There's a little tree that lives back in there. These are far away. Just little soft trees that live back in there. A little red every now and then. There. See, it gives it sort of a sort of an autumn feel. All right. Maybe over here lives another one. Boy, there's one that's really red. It's bright red. That's okay. It's okay. In our world, we can have any color we want. Because we're the boss. We can do it all. All right. Now then, let's start figuring out what's happening down here. Just take, touch, and begin tapping. Just begin tapping. It's picking up that color that we put on the canvas underneath there. And the more you tap it, the more it'll, it'll pick it up and that color will just get darker and darker automatically. So you have to make the big decision how dark you want it to be. I'm just varying some of the colors when I go away. Putting on a little bit of the yellows and the greens. But think about the lay of the land, the way the land flows. I want the land to look like it's coming like that. So that's what we'll do. Now if you have trouble making it stick, add a little bit of paint thinner before you go through the paint to load your brush. Let me repeat one word in there though, little bit. Takes very, very little. Don't put much in there. Little goes a long, long way. Long, long way. Okay. Well, I'm, look at there. Look at there. Isn't that neat? You can do this. You really and truly can do it. A little practice, and off you go. Shoot. Now, look at there. Already you have a lot of depth. A lot of depth. I know what I'm, I'm gonna, let me show you, let me show you. I'm sorry, I get excited sometimes. I wanna pull this tree down. Now you saying Bobby really cracked up now, but watch. I know it's hard to see against all that dark, but I've decided that tree should be in the foreground. We had him in the background and we moved him because in our world, we can move trees, we can bend rivers, anything that we wanna do. There, see? kinds of little duders. I didn't paint over here very well, so we'll just put a tree there to sort of fill that hole up. Trees are wonderful for that. There we go. 
Hey, looks like a little meadow back here now. Okay. Just let your imagination take you to any land that you want to live in, any place that you want to go. All right. Shoot, that's looking pretty good there. Let's take our little script liner brush. We'll take a little brown, a little brown. Let me put a little white over there too. Now we got a little brown and a little white. I want to make a, a very thin, thin paint here. Very thin. Okay, maybe I'll even put a little black to, to gray it. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, in our world, there's an old tree trunk in there. Now, if your hand's a little nervous and you got a little shake, this is the time to use it. That way you don't end up with just a plain old trunk in your tree. Put something in there that's got some, some interest to it. And then we're going to cover most of it up with leaves. But some of it will show. Some of it will show. This old tree says, I want one too. There. See, you decide. You decide where they are. There. Maybe your, maybe your tree don't even have any trunk in it. Maybe you can't see it. We know it has it, but maybe you can't see it. That's up to you, too. Any way that you want it to be is just right. There. Maybe we'll give him one more little arm. One over here to hold up that old, that old area. All right. Now then, let's begin to figure out where these old trees are. Take a little, the yellow, little sap green. Every once in a while I'm going to touch a little bit of red. Okay, let's go up in here. Let's do this one. Yeah. Start right up in here and just begin putting the impression of some little leaves on there that live right out in there. Right out there. A little more paint on the brush. There we are. Don't be afraid to to stop and load the brush frequently, just like we do here. Sometimes you have to load it several times during one tree. That's okay. That's okay. We're not in any hurry. Well, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> As you know, I got a mean old director back here. There we are. I should talk about my mean old director a little bit. She's really a very nice person, and I pick on her she deserves it. <laughs> this whole crew here where we filmed the show, some of the best people I've ever met. And I'd like to thank them. I don't do that often enough. Because without them, there would be no joy of painting. They are the best. There we are. See, got a little happy tree right there. Right there. Let's go over here. I'm gonna change the flavor a little. Put a little red in there. Spruce it up some. Let's go right up in here. We'll put something on this little old tree. We don't want to be left out. Or I guess this is a big old tree. But use just the corner of the just the corner of the brush. That's all you need. Don't want to hit it full on, face on. Just just the corner. And if you have a lot of paint and it's thinner than what's up there, it'll come right off your brush and it'll work so well. I think the greatest thing about this style of painting, it has allowed every person, every person who's ever wanted to put a dream on canvas to do just that. You don't have to be blessed by Michelangelo. Don't have to go to school half your life. You can paint. And you could do a real nice job of it. There. And I got another little tree done. Now, all we got to do is start picking out the little things here and there. I want to add the least little touch of paint thinner, least little touch. You might even want to tap it on a paper towel, make sure you got all the excess out. You can always go back and add a little more. Okay, a little more of the color, and off we go. Now we'll start picking out individuals here. Individuals. There we are. There's a happy little bush. He lives right there. Boy, what a view he has. Mm, that's where I want to live, right there. That's the spot. I think he has the best view in here. Yeah. 
I lived in Alaska for over 12 years. And some of the most beautiful scenery in the world is there. Absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, this is the last show of the 31st series. So it's always sort of a sad time when it comes to the last show. But hopefully we'll have the opportunity to produce some more. And if you hadn't got a chance to see all of them, because there's over 400 shows now, do give your station a call. Let them know that you want to see them, because they're available to them. They are available to them. There we are. See, I'm just putting layers and layers and layers of bushes, and this is where all the mosquitoes live. Like that. There. This is a good place for my little squirrel to live right here. My little peapot. I got one more piece of film I want to show you. He's just such a cute little devil. <laughs> Isn't he something else? This is Peapod the Pocket Squirrel. There. I really like these little creatures. They bring a lot of joy to my life. A lot of joy. Where I live, a lot of the, a lot of the young people come over just to see the animals, see what kind of creatures Bob's got that day. And it's such a nice way. You can't, you can't handle a little squirrel like that and grow up and not like them. I don't believe you can. And I think we need to learn to respect nature and all of God's little creatures. And one of the ways that I like to do it is to bring you little characters like him. Yeah. Because isn't he cute? Well, that's a close-up and a half there, isn't it? <laughs> little devil. Sometimes I have eight or ten of them at one time that I'm raising and then I'll turn them loose. And, Eh, we have a few little wild birds and all kind of things like that. Whatever needs to be raised and taken care of, we'll do it. It's my way of saying thank you. Because a little squirrel, or whatever you happen to have, he allows you to share a little bit of his world for a few days. And that's very special. Not many people get to do that. Let's go up here in this little bush. I've got all these done while you're looking at the squirrel. There, a little old tree right here. We decided he's a hanging around, having a good time. There he goes. There he goes. It's hard to believe you can take a two-inch brush and do all this, isn't it? And take a little thalo blue and put it in there. It'll make a very bright green. Whew. One of them that'll hurt your eyes. Don't want a lot of it, but a little bit here and there. Makes a nice green if you're doing springtime. Very nice green. Put a little more paint thinner on my brush. Just to get the paint a little thinner. But it needs to be just a small amount. Don't, don't, don't overdo. Don't overdo. I know I get excited. But I want it to work for you. It's most important to me that this works for you. I want to eat. I saw. It's, it's just a natural place for a path. Van Dyke Brown, dark sienna. Yeah. A little roll of paint on the knife. And let's go up in here. And let's just, let's put us in some brown paint. And let's make a path. We need a pl way to walk back. That looks like a little meadow that lives back in there. And we need a way to get back in there. I like to, I like to run through the meadow. Take my shoes off. Just, just let your foots run naked through there. That's, that feels good on the bottom of your feet. Haven't you ever done that? Most people have it, one time or another, whether they'll admit it publicly or not. They've just taken their, their shoes off and ran through the meadow, and <clears throat> I like it. Okay, let's take some white, some white, a little Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna, mix them together. Mm, and put a little touch of the bright red in there, too. Yeah, maybe a little more. I like that. I like that, yeah. Experiment, just do crazy things. What's the worst thing can happen? On this canvas, nothing. Little roll of paint. Little roll of paint, barely, barely touching. Just let it graze. Just let it graze. Just like you're laying snow on the mountain. But isn't this neat, to, using the, the black and the gray gesso? Sure makes painting easier. We introduced black gesso and gray gesso quite a while back, and it has almost become a standard in the art world now. Almost a standard. 
think, I think everybody's using it now. Yeah. There. Let's take a little bit more of the of this green color. Notice it's very thin. It's very thin. Now then, I want to set that down into the painting. So we'll begin to put bushes that come up over it, distinctly up over the path. And that'll push that little rascal right down in there. There we go. Wherever, wherever. A little bright red. And we'll just drop in some little duders. There. Something like so. You know, I've mentioned before in this series that if you have time, take a picture of what you're doing, send to us. We would love to see what, what you're doing, what kind of success you're having. A little letter from you telling us how you're enjoying the show, what you would like to see. If you would like to see something that I can't paint, shoot, we'll find somebody that can. If you want flowers, I'll bring my partner Annette back. Maybe you've seen one of her flowers she did once before. White Rascal can paint some flowers. Or if you want to see something else, just let me know. We really, we really try to find shows that you will like. Try to produce shows you'll like. We'll put a little stick right there. Something about like so. Just a little duder, it lives in there. Shoot, we got a minute left here. Hmm, <laughs> let's get crazy. You know me. Let's have us. Yes, that lives. I don't want to kill that little bush, I like him. A little tree, a big tree, I mean. <laughs> See how them rascals grow on you? And we'll have a little tree here. He needs a little friend. Give him a little friend. There we are. Let's make, let's make this a, a birch tree. It would really stand out. White paint would really stand out against that color. There we are. There we are. Look at that. They're easy to make. Easy to make. A little bit on Junior here. Everybody needs a friend, even an old tree. Okay, now take our liner brush, paint thinner. I want to thin it down, thin some brown down, very, very thin, very thin. A lot of paint thinner. And let's put a little arm or two. Maybe this old tree don't have any leaves. Maybe he's already retired for the, for the year. We'll just put him a few little arms up here. There we go. Now maybe in yours, you'd like to have leaves on a tree. You can do that. There are no rules here that say what you can or can't paint. You paint whatever you want. There we are. There we are. And we'll put another one right in there. And something for old, we called him Junior, so he needs some he needs a little arm on him. About like that. There we are. Okay. And maybe, maybe one more little. There. All kinds of little things. Let's take a little bit of paint thinner. A little light color. And we'll put a few little sticks and twigs and that live here and there. We don't know where they are, where they are. Put them mostly in the dark areas, though. There. Shoot, I think with that, we about have a finished painting. I think I'll sign this one. The old clock on the wall tells me it's about time to bring this show and this series to a close. I've really enjoyed being with you for the past 13 shows, and I hope to see you again very soon. If you get a chance, stop by Branson. Missouri, say hello to us. Until next time, I'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting, God bless, and we'll see you soon.